MetaQuotes is basically telling all of the brokerage firms across the world that it does not want any prop business on their platforms. Why? Well, a while back, you may remember that MetaQuotes was kicked off the Apple App Store. That was almost an extinction level event for that company because the Apple App Store is effectively the primary gateway to every customer in the world. Now they came back onto the Apple uh, platform. And I think part of the reason why they came back was because they promised them that they were going to follow very strict regulatory guidelines. And those guidelines lead directly to one space and one space only, good old US of A. US regulations absolutely forbid US citizens to trade non-regulated Forex or to trade any CFD products anywhere in the world. Even if they wanted to, they could not deposit money offshore. So over the last couple of months, you've noticed something. MetaTrader has been denying licenses to any brokers that took US business onto their books. But now they're going further. Now they really wanna clean up shop because what they wanna do is take any business away from prop firms that may inadvertently put U.S. customers on their books. They want to make sure that no U.S. customer ever trades CFDs either virtually or in real on a brokerage platform because that's going to be a violation of U.S. regulation and that's going to put MetaTrader in a very vulnerable position. They don't want to be in the prop space. They just want to be in the brokerage space. Now, for the U.S. customers, that obviously means one thing. I think the prop Forex business for U.S. customers is going to be dead. It's just a matter of time before nobody is going to take any U.S. business anywhere in the world on the Forex prop side. But there's much deeper implications to it than that. The very fact that MetaTrader is making all the brokers drop the prop business means that prop firms now will not have MetaTrader as their primary front end. And MetaTrader, let's face it, love it, hate it, or feel indifferent about it, is the single most dominant platform in the retail space. It owns the vast majority market share of all trading. Almost all algorithmic trading is done on MetaTrader in the retail space. So yes, now you hear Forex prop firms going and saying, well, we're going to get another provider. We're going to use C-Trader. Well, first of all, C-Trader can't even be used in the United States. But even if it can, it's not a platform that many people are used to or comfortable with. So the very next question, the really serious question going forward is, is this an extinction level event, not just for, um, for, me for brokerages, but for prop firms? Meaning that all prop firms are going to have to shift away from MetaTrader and will the customers come and follow them? Will the customers be willing to trade on non metatrader platforms and still try to uh, participate in the prop trading space. That's going to be the $64 billion question as we go forward in this industry. At very minimum, what's happening right now is there's going to be a massive pause. US customers are gonna be taken off the books completely. Global customers are not gonna be able to trade until prop firms find new uh, trading providers. And even then, they're going to have to figure out if those new trading providers are going to be able to handle the flow, the quotes, and all of the backend um, production that has just been essentially taken for granted because MetaTrader is the backend for the retail trading community globally. That's going to be a very interesting question, and we're going to see how that develops over the next couple of months. But in the meantime, you may notice something very interesting. The one area of prop that's been completely unaffected, totally not bothered, just keeps on going and pumping and pumping and pumping, is the futures prop space. Now, why is that happening? There's been no futures prop firm that's, that's even remotely been controversially uh, in the news over the last couple of months. Why are future, futures prop firms completely untouched by all of this controversy? Well, for two reasons. Number one, U.S. regulators are very comfortable with futures. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange essentially is very happy to have all of this prop business to introduce traders to futures trading um, and let them trade. But more importantly, there is no dominant 
software provider in the future space. Futures are traded on an exchange. So traders can use any kind of software to access um, the trading products. They can trade Rhythmic, they can trade NinjaTrader, they can even trade directly through TradingView on their futures platforms. It really doesn't much matter. And more importantly, in the future space, there is one single price. Everybody who trades futures, whether they trade on a virtual basis or on a real basis, is going to be seeing that exact same price, doesn't matter what prop firm they're trading with. It's all going to be there in one unified price. And that's why U.S. regulatory authorities are perfectly comfortable letting everybody um, trade futures prop. This means that we might see some radical shift over the next couple of months as more and more traders decide, you know what, the Forex prop space is just too much, and maybe I should try futures. Now, there is one caveat to this. You see, if you're gonna be trading futures, you certainly can trade US indices, you certainly can trade oil, you certainly can trade gold, but you're really gonna be hampered in being able to trade Forex. And for those traders who are really wedded to trading Forex, there just not as much any liquidity or any availability to trade uh, Forex pairs. You could trade the Euro, you could trade the Yen, you could trade the Pound. That's about it on the futures uh, space. And it's not even that liquid on most of the futures exchanges because it's really not that big a futures product. So yeah, that's going to be the big give back to anybody who considers coming into the future space. But on the other hand, that space seems to be very unscathed. And while there is just turmoil and everyday commotion in the Forex prop space, the future space keeps marching on. We're going to keep a very, very close eye on to this because this story is not over. But the one thing we know for sure is that the options are getting more limited by the day. And if you're a U.S. customer, you might as well just assume the worst and understand that there'll be no more Forex prop trading for you. I'm Boris Lasberg, wishing you guys the best of luck and the best of trading. I'll see you in the markets. Over and out.